Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. As I told you last week, Easter does go on and on for quite some time. This year takes us all the way through the end of May, so we still have a lot of Easter left to celebrate. So let's begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh God, may these scriptures reveal your plan for us, Open our minds and hearts to listen to your word through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood with the 11 apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone else living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. Now listen to what I have to say about Jesus from Nazareth. God proved that he sent Jesus to you by having him work miracles, wonders, and signs. All of you know this. God has already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you took him and had evil men put him to death on a cross. But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death could not hold him in its power. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, our God is God. His love endures forever. Let all the children of Israel say, God's love endures forever. This is the day, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
two of Jesus' disciples were going to the village of Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. As they were talking and thinking about what had happened, Jesus came near and started walking along beside them, but they did not know who he was. Jesus asked them, what were you talking about as you walked along? The two of them stood there looking sad and gloomy. Then the one named Cleopas asked Jesus, are you the only person from Jerusalem who didn't know what was happening there these last few days? What do you mean, Jesus said. They answered, those things that happened to Jesus from Nazareth, by what he did and said, he showed he was a powerful prophet who pleased God and all the people. Then the chief priest and our leaders had him arrested and sentenced to die on a cross. We had hoped that he would be the one to set Israel free. But it has already been three days since all this happened. Some women in our group surprised us. They had gone to the tomb early in the morning, but they did not find the body of Jesus. They came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he was alive. Some men from our group then went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus either. Then Jesus asked the two disciples, why can't you understand? How can you be so slow to believe all that the prophet said? Didn't you know that the Messiah would have to suffer before he was given to glory? Jesus then explained everything written about himself in the scriptures, beginning with the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. When the two of them came near the village where they were going, Jesus seemed to be going further. They begged him, stay with us, it's already late and the sun is going down. So Jesus went into the house to stay with them. After Jesus sat down to eat, he took some bread, he blessed it and broke it, then he gave it to them. At once they knew who he was, but he disappeared. They said to each other, when he talked with us along the road and explained the scriptures to us, didn't it warm our hearts? So they got right up and returned to Jerusalem. The two disciples found the 11 apostles and the others gathered together. And they learned from the group, group that the Lord was really alive and had appeared to Peter. Then the disciples from Emmaus told what happened on the road and how they knew he was the Lord when he broke the bread. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, I'm gonna tell you that this is one of my favorite stories in the gospels and in fact in the Bible, but I think I tell you that every week. <laughs> uh, but I do love the story of the disciples who meet Jesus on the way to Emmaus and they have no idea that it is Jesus. Obviously, this is after Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. But they didn't, some of the disciples just didn't understand what had happened. And so they were leaving Jerusalem. And obviously, when you see an event before you, a big happening before you, and they saw their friend die on a cross, of course, what are you going to do while you walk along? You're going to talk about what happened. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus came up to them. But Jesus was glorified, so he wasn't yet recognized by his disciples. His body looked somewhat different than his earthly body looked. So again, they didn't quite know it was Jesus. And they were really shocked that this man they were walking with had no idea what had just happened in Jerusalem. No idea. So of course, they filled him in on all the news because this is before TV and this is before the internet. So the way you got your news was people telling other people what had happened. So here they go and they're walking along, but they say something interesting. When they talk later about talking with Jesus, they say that their hearts were burning within them. How does it feel to have your heart burn within you? It seems like an interesting feeling or an interesting happening. Maybe that it's your heart filling with joy and happiness and it's beating fast and it's beating hard because you know there's something special happening happening on the road that you did not expect to have happen. 
So because their hearts were burning, they asked Jesus to have a meal with them. And again, it seems like a nice thing to do. You met a guy on the road. Hey, why don't you come and have a meal with us? And when Jesus ate with them, he did something that they had seen and heard about before. He blessed and broke bread. And that's a lot like what happened at the Last Supper. That is the moment where they realize, oh, this man is Jesus. He didn't die. Well, actually, he did die, but he rose from the dead. And it is a beautiful story of recognizing Jesus in our lives. Every time we go to church, we have what's called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And Eucharist means Thanksgiving. And so when the priest does what Jesus does during the Mass, when he breaks the bread and shares it with all of us, he promises us in that moment that Jesus Christ is truly with us. And it's wonderful to receive Eucharist. Right now, some of you were probably supposed to receive your first communion next weekend and it's been delayed. We don't even know yet when it's gonna happen. And some of you probably haven't received first communion and won't for a year or two or three, but it will be an exciting time once you have a chance to receive Eucharist. And maybe you've heard your mom and dad talk or your grandparents talk about how much they miss receiving Eucharist at church. It's just not the same thing to watch Mass. It's still important, but we really desire to have Jesus with us each and every day, and especially on Sundays when we're missing our Sunday Mass. There's one other important thing I want you to remember about this story. Sometimes, just like the disciples, we don't see Jesus in our lives, but Jesus is always there. Jesus is always there to guide you and to help you. And sometimes we feel alone or we feel scared, especially right now when things aren't the same that they were. You might not be going to school right now and maybe you miss your teacher or miss your grandparents. But even during those times, Jesus is with us. He never leaves us. It's like we're walking along and he is walking with us all the time. His love for you is so deep and so powerful. He is with you at every moment. And not only is he with you at every moment, he is with all your family members at every moment. He's with me and he's with all the people all around the world in every moment. God takes excellent care of us. Let's think about the ways that Jesus takes care of us. Sometimes Jesus sends us people into our lives to take care of us, and that's the work of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we see beautiful things outside, and we know it's the work of Jesus. Just remember, even though right now we cannot go to church, we still have the ability to see Jesus all around us, in our houses, outside our houses, and in each and every one of us. And so, boys and girls, let's say our petitions. Now, if you have anything specific you need to pray for, you can discuss that with mom and dad right now. May all Christians proclaim their joy and faith in the resurrection all around the world, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. May the good news of the risen Christ bring social justice to all people in all nations and that the people of the world get the supplies and the food that they need for each day. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from the darkness of sin and despair and who cannot recognize Jesus in their daily life, that their eyes are open to the power of God we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way, we would like to pray for our families and our friends and our parish community that everyone stays safe and healthy during the time that we are apart. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we also would like you to shine your light on those who have died. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Blessed are you, Lord God. We thank you for all you have created. Hear us, your children, who call to you and grant us your saving grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have another blessed week, boys and girls. Enjoy the continuing Easter season and the springtime weather. I know sometimes it's raining. Right now it's raining outside my window. But take a chance and go outside when it is sunny. And maybe, just maybe, you can jump in a puddle today. That would be extra fun too. So ask permission first. Ask permission first. <laughs> Make sure you do that. Okay, boys and girls, I love you. We are praying for you. We can't wait to be together real soon. Talk to you later. Bye now.